Hello, America. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my review of 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days. I hope that's not my husband walking in the door. Um, this show is fucking everything that I could ever ask for and more, okay? Let's start off with Hazel because I don't Hazel. Let's start off with Darcy and Jesse. No, no, no. I don't want this to be long, about 20 minutes. So let's start off with uh, Marta and Dia because they did nothing. Um, after uh, last week and her or their last conversation, her asking him for the letter of invitation, him getting mad because she had on a damn uh, a cross. I'm Muslim. You're Christian. I mean, damn, nigga, is we that different? Like, you can't even look at my cross. Like, it's like, like he left. Um, he hasn't sent the letter of uh, invitation. Um, she's talking to maybe, I would suppose, one of her stripper friends, allegedly. And she's like, I haven't told my mother that she uh, he hasn't sent the letter of invitation yet. I don't know. I just thought that, you know, he was for me. But now I feel like, you know, we not meshing or whatever, or like we going through problems. And um, her friend is like, girl, if that's how you feel, then this nigga ain't for you. Okay. You need to find somebody where you feel like he going to be here for you and accept you. And like this religion thing, not be such a deal breaker because it's completely a deal breaker for no apparent reason. Like, I don't understand. Like. You act like she an atheist or something. You act like she believes in Satan. Okay? She has a religion. She believes in... in I, I don't get it. She believes in a creator just like you. What's going on? Anyway, I don't think they gave me nothing else about uh, Marta and uh, Dia the entire episode. So, that's all I'm giving you. Uh, moving on. See, everybody was so crazy. Let's just go from, I don't know. Let's do Michael and Angela. Michael and Angela, um, they walk up the mountain. Michael is telling her a little bit about Nigerian history when the Civil War happened. Um, the uh, people came and hid uh, their family in the caves to, you know, protect them. Angela makes a joke. Anyway. Angela makes a joke for no fucking apparent reason. Uh, well, I know the reason, but I'm not going to say. Um, they sit on the rock. She's like, did you think I was going to make it up here? He's like, yeah, you know, you're a strong woman. I, I, I believed in you. Um, then, what? What? They, they say something. Damn, I can't remember the conversation on the rock. Um, he... She talking about how the love is gone, I think, because ain't that all she talk about? And he say, I know, baby, I'm trying to, you know, get it back. Um, I'll put it up under the screen what they're talking about because I just, for the life of me, cannot remember. Moving on, um, they go to, not a restaurant, but they go to sit down somewhere. Um... He's like, you know, I want to get to know you better. I want to know your your likes and your dislikes. I want to know about my woman. She's like, well, what's something that I don't like? He's like lying and cheating. She's like, yeah, I don't really think, I don't know if the life that I live will be, um, like, will be considered boring for you. Like, I live in the boondocks, like. All I do is, like, rush to get the kids to school, rush to go to work. It's not the hoppity-poppity. It's not the hoppity-poppity um, action of Nigeria. And he's like, no, I know, baby. It wouldn't be boring to me. He's trying to secure the flag, okay? That's all he's trying to do is secure the flag. There's nothing else that he wants more. Um, She... He's like, um, how 
is your family going to like react to me she's like something you know i'll tell you that i didn't care about their story too much she's like basically um i don't know michael if i let you go then i'm losing a good man if i let you in then i'm letting somebody in who doesn't love me and so He's like, I do love you. I want to make it work. You know, the blah, 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 the regular uh, spiel. Oh, I want a lemon. Oh, I want some lemon curd so bad. Oh, Lord Jesus. No. The way that that just came into my mind. Oh, I got to find the recipe. Got to find my mama's recipe. Mmm. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um. So then she pulls out of her uh, wherever a flag and he's like, what is this? She's like, will you accept this flag? You're going to America. He opens up the flag and it's a ring in there. He gets up, he's screaming. He, oh, 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 I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. Too damn excited for me. She like, why are you shaking me? Why are you doing this? Because he's going to America. His mission has been fulfilled, okay? The fuck he's done what he set out to do. You, 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 you make some goals, okay? Then you achieve those goals and you celebrate. And this is his celebration because he can check this goal off the list, supposedly, okay? dun dun, dun. Wait. Ba ba ba, ba ba ba. So he's like, I got a surprise for you, baby. He gets down on his knee, he pulls out a ring. He's like, Will you be my woman? <laughs> oh, Michael, why didn't you give me this before? Because he had to secure the flag. He wasn't about to give you no perfectly good ring he could have gave to that woman who gave him some head. The fuck he had to know that he was going to go to America first before he give you anything. Okay. Okay. So that's the end of their story. They kiss. They love. They're in love. They're engaged. They're happy. Um, He said, Angela makes me feel like a real man. I'm a real man. But I thought he said. Angela makes me feel like a real woman. And I had to go back at least three times to understand what he said. Because I said, I know that nigga. I know he said she was masculine, but damn, that's rude. Um, moving on to, uh, who am I going to move on to? Darcy and Jesse. Well, Jesse had made his way to motherfucking America to break up with Darcy. Who does this? I know I said this last time, but who does that? Like, hey, I don't fuck with you no more. What? Hang up the phone. Before she even finished the what? You done hung up the phone. You done blocked her. You done changed your name. You done changed your password. You done changed your phone number. You done changed your address. So she can't hop on a flight real quick and get to your house. You done changed your face. You done did a Hannibal Lecter and removed somebody's face and put it on your face because you don't want to have any more contact with this woman, right? No, what you do is you fly to New York to break up with somebody. Darcy um, is on the train. Well, she is off the train. I think the last episode she was on the train with her... Three, her two bags of luggage, her carry-on bag and her um, her checked luggage, and also a purse. She has on a form-fitting white dress um, and this like white uh, coat. Somebody said it was um, it looked like a house coat, but that shit was nice. I think the whole outfit was nice, not the face, but the neck down. I think that was really nice. Because I was like, bitch, could you, ooh, could you, could you imagine? Ooh, damn, okay. So, she's waiting on Jesse. She's like, I have a bad feeling. I don't know, just something doesn't seem right. Jesse's in the car. Oh, shit, I ain't got no sunglasses. But he's in the car with his sunglasses on. 
He's like, I found out something about Darcy that uh, just made me know for a fact that this relationship couldn't continue. So he meets Jesse. Oh, damn. He meets Darcy. He sees Darcy. Um, he gives her a hug. She, he's like, hey, sweetie, how are you? I don't, honestly, why are you even doing this? He, he hug her. She says, you look amazing. He says, your dress looks amazing. Uh, she's like, I just brought, you know, a couple of pieces of luggage and some shoe changes. He's like, okay, that's good. Um, are you cold? And she's like, I'm freezing. He's like, okay, you want to go to the hotel? She's like, oh, is that the plan? He's like, let's get an Uber. We'll go to the hotel and then. So she says to him, your eyes look amazing. And they show him. I know it was a cut, but they show this nigga. And I said, does his eyes look amazing? Huh? I just, gosh, this episode really did everything that it was supposed to do if I didn't mention that already um he gives her a hug he says your eyes look amazing too she starts to cry he's like oh baby no don't cry she she's crying he pulls her away he's like we're gonna go to the hotel and then we're gonna get you warmed up blah 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 she looks up at him like Son, damn, wish I could do that face. That's the way she was looking up at that nigga. He's like, oh, baby, don't cry. And she's just like, I can tell something is wrong. Something is not right. So they're in the car. They're going to the hotel. Why did you even, why are you even inviting her to a hotel if um they're in the Uber and he's like, um, she, they're just talking, basically arguing, but it's not an argument. Darcy doesn't even say anything. And then Jesse's like, well, you need to work on yourself. And she's like, wait, what are you talking about? I know about what happened. She's like, what are you talking about? He's like, how many days you got to spend in jail? She's like, what? Why are you bringing that up? What you talking about? Why are you talking like that? The police reports are online. Okay. What, what are you talking about? Tell me. Um, He's like, you got arrested for hitting your sister. Okay, but I don't have to spend any days in jail. That was just boom, boom. First of all, why do me beat my sister's ass have anything to do with you? That's what I want to know. If I beat my sister's ass, why do you feel like, hey, let me fly all the way to New York with my collar popped up and say, I can't be with you, okay? You're hitting the, the, the pretty twin, and I can't be with you at. Somebody did ask that on 90 Day Fiance Live. Did you think that Jesse was flirting with you? And I do kind of think that Jesse was flirting with her. Just because they got the same face, and he was like, well, I already think Darcy cute, so I definitely think she cute. It seems like she realizes Darcy's problems. Let me try to holler at her. And also, Darcy and her sister are just like, she got her sister... Stacy, that's not her sister's name. Her sister got a nigga from out of the country too. He twenty years old, four years younger than Jesse. What in the hell is going on with y'all? Okay, and I I don't know why y'all fought, but it's sister shit. Like, come on. So he's like, I'm not about to deal with this, Darcy. You always trying to argue. I'm trying to have a mature conversation. And I'm like, what in the fuck she do? What did she do? I don't understand what she did. I feel like she did. She didn't do anything wrong. Jesse just got some fucking issues. So she's like, man, you better pull this motherfucking car over. Let me out right now. Let me out right now. You never loved me. You never did, you fucking liar. He's like, oh, does this make you feel good? Does it make you feel good? Because you're the one who came to New York. To break up, I've never heard of this. You break up with somebody in person when you're in the same state, city as them. Not even state. It's a 20-minute drive, maybe. But if I'm going from L.A. to um to Altadena, or no, not Altadena, to Alameda, 
Altadena to Alta, Alameda. L.A. to Alameda. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay? No one's doing that. Fuck. Y'all niggas is crazy. So that's the end of their story. It seems like their relationship has withered away. Moving on. Who am I going to talk about? Darcy and John. Darcy is on her way to London, the UK, wherever the fuck she's going with her damn baby. She's having a pre-wedding party, a friends and family gathering. Is that just not called an engagement party or am I tripping? I'm, I'm married, but I ain't do none of that shit. So so tell me, is that is that is a pre-wedding not an engagement because if this is my pre-husband ain't that a fiance you don't walk around and say the the the, the, the I, I don't know i don't know i don't know but i got mad with them saying pre-wedding and friends and family gathering first of all rachel you ain't got no friends or family there so they on the plane 12 hours later they arrive Jesse looked like Jesse. John looked like he just got off of work. His hair looked a little. I don't know. He just ain't look. He he looked like he could have maybe tucked his shirt in or, or or wore a button down shirt that was tailored or something. Maybe got a haircut. Maybe if he he looked way better the first time she seen him than the second time. He said, "Well, you know me now. This is the real me." So they, they hug, they kiss, they love each other, when, when, when. Lucy is like, oh, you again, nigga? You fucking with this nigga again, ma? Okay, fine. Fine, that's why you have nobody here. My sister ain't even here. I can't even, I can't even fucking look at my sister's face, okay? No, oh, everyone's texting me for things that I don't care about. They get in the car. Rachel says, um, not to him, but to the camera, that she found out about the messages on his social media, and she uh, doesn't want to confront him right away because she wants to savor the moment, but then she wants to confront him. So they're in the car. She's like, um, you invited an ex-girlfriend? And... Before she says that, or is it before or after? <laughs> after she says that, she says, we're going to go left. So she says that ex-girlfriend part. Then she says, we're going to go left. John says, which fucking way are we supposed to go? Right or fucking left? You see, there's a bicycle up there. And Rachel doesn't react at all, which makes me, I don't know. So she's like, I said left very, very calmly. And I'm just like, I don't know. 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 Maybe it's my own thing. Um, He's like, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I just, you know, you you were talking about my ex-girlfriend and I heard that and I got distracted. And she's like, you're inviting an ex-girlfriend. I don't want to meet an ex-girlfriend. And um, they go to the cottage. It's a really nice cottage. I said, how in the hell are y'all affording to rent this cottage when you live paycheck to paycheck and you're getting married in, what, two weeks, they said? Girl, bye. Oh, you only going to have a cottage for three days? I'm confused. I don't know, but I don't, I don't care. So they sit down. She says, remember when I went on your social media? Um, for me to fix that problem, I saw that you were conversing with your ex and you told her that you loved her. You told her that you, you were sorry for hurting her. You told her that, um, all of that other shit. And he was like, I mean, I, I wanted to mend the past. Excuse me. I wanted to mend the past. I wasn't saying it to, uh. Like, I wasn't saying it in a romantic way. I was saying it in a, like, uh, a reflective way. So she was like, you can't just be throwing love around. He was like, I didn't throw it around. Like, I did love her, and I 
treated her badly because I wanted to just go and do whatever I wanted to. And in some way, I can understand, I guess he's saying sorry, but then in the other way, it's just like, you say you sorry, and then one day, she's like, how's your marriage, and y'all been fighting, and then he say, um, I'm going to get a drink, and then you go get a drink with him, and then y'all have sex, okay, so, yeah, so she's like, um, is that the same girlfriend that you invited to the get-together, he says, no, I said, damn, she's like, I have, um, you know, some trust issues, because he hasn't been completely faithful in the past, and I just don't want this to happen, she says to him, um, we're going to be husband and wife very far away. Okay, well, don't marry the nigga. First of all, the nigga, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't really care. I think next week we'll see. Uh, I think. I don't know. Is the season over? Next week we'll probably see them get married or something. I don't fucking know. Anyway, moving on to uh, Paul and Karini. Paul and Karini decide to work things out for the betterment of the baby. They then go to for a checkup, well, for a, an emergency appointment. Damn, that took a lot for me to say. They then go for an emergency appointment after the uh, the checkup that they had, and the, they were told that the baby had some uh, abnormalities. They go to the check, the doctor, um, the doctor just blatantly tells them the baby is stopped, the baby is dead, the umbilical cord, your baby dead. I mean, there was a better way you could have said that. Okay, now you can get up, the exam is over. Paul didn't know what the fuck was going on, which... If this was not an indication for you to get and learn it, learn her language, I don't know what was. He found out after that the baby had passed. Then he's like, oh, the baby's dead? I'm like, damn, why are you say it like that? I mean, so um, it's sad. They lost the baby. Uh, Karini is sad. She wanted her son to be okay. Paul is sad. He, uh, it, it was told that it was genetic. The producer actually had to come and um, translate for them because he didn't know what was going on. So, um, they have to admit her to the hospital for two days to get the fetus out of her. And, um, yeah, so that was sad. That's the end of their story. I think they will be a couple now. I think maybe this will make this, re their relationship stronger, but still not a good one. So, uh, moving on to, who am I moving on to? We're going to talk about Ricky because I want to say the worst for last. Ricky. Ricky's bad. Ricky. Um, Jimena meets him and um, Jimena is like, uh, is you with me? I can't remember the song, so I can't sing it. But she like, if you with me, jump in this this pool. He like, I can't um swim. She like, I don't give a damn. Jump in the pool and say you pool. Jump in the uh lake and say you love me. I love Amina. So he jumps in the lake. This is his last day there. They're going on a romantic. Nope, that's not it. That's the day before that. So he jumps in the uh he jumps in the thing in the lake. Um he almost drowned. The producers have to help him out. He's like, now is this fine? Do you do you realize that I love you? She's like, Yeah, I guess. Yeah, nigga, I guess you do love me, I guess. Even though that's an easy ass way to get a nigga off. Y'all women gotta start thinking not at all. Just let that nigga go, okay? There is nothing that, like, like that. Jump off the rooftop and say you love me. No, the fuck? Just get the fuck out of my life, okay? And that'll prove that you really love me if you let me go. The next day.
they meet up. They are going on a, this is a romantic boat trip that they're going on. It's his last day before he goes back to Columbus. And he's going to propose. So he says, um, you know, I love you. Um, damn, I can't remember exactly what he said. Stuff. I can't remember exactly what he said, but um, he was like, I want to take a picture with you. Turn around and face that way. She turns around and faces that way. He pulls out the ring. He says, I told you about Melissa because I want you to be in my life. I want you to be here forever. Oh, also, I just remembered he told her that he was in debt to his last wife because she gave him $30,000 so he could fight for custody of his older daughter, his oldest child. And I guess now you want to fight for custody for your youngest child? I don't know. But who going to give you the money? Hamena? TLC better give you the money because ain't nobody about to give you no $30,000. Fuck. And now you got custody of your daughter and you, you over here talking. So they're engaged. Uh, they're happy. Um. Ricky has to go back to uh, Columbus, as I said, and it's going to be a sad, you know, sad time without him. He just hopes that the fire can still be rekindled while they're so, so many miles away. Moving on. Tariq and fucking Hazel. First of all, I watched the live show. I'm not going to do a fucking review on it because it wasn't shit. But the live show, Dean said the reason why I asked Hazel if she was going to be enough for uh, Tariq in the bedroom is because Tariq likes to have other people in the bedroom, uh, multiple women in the bedroom. But Hazel told me she was bisexual, so that's fine. Um, the host then asked Dean, have you ever participated? He says, I can't say. Um, the, the four day vacation is almost over. He says he's going to tell his daughter who has, um, who's on the autism spectrum that um, he's going to tell his daughter's mother about Hazel. He calls his daughter's mother his daughter's mother does not pick up the phone he wants hazel to move so he um calls his uh baby mama his baby mama does not pick up the phone hazel is kind of upset because he told her to move away from him he's like rosita rosalita whatever that woman name is rosalita don't need to know what i'm doing rosalita just need to know that i ain't in virginia beach but you want rosalita to be okay with this woman being her second mom, as Hazel said. So, um, they go. They uh, sit down. <sighs> Hazel says, um, well, Dean says, I have a crazy brother. Hazel says, I have a crazy sister. He's like, what do you mean? She's like, my sister doesn't like you. She messaged me and wants me to marry someone from Japan. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Hmm? She wants me to marry someone else from Japan. Uh, she has me set up with someone. Uh, he might be rich. Tariq then says, your sister doesn't know me. How could she not like me? Hazel then says to the camera, I'm the one who messaged my sister. But she does have a man who is waiting for me. Or who would be perfect for me. Tariq then says, I feel like I'm being pressured. I'm being forced to propose. And I'm not really good when I'm pushed against a wall. Well, apparently, Tariq, you're perfectly fine when you're pushed against a fucking wall. 
the next scene. Why did this nigga even make a song? See, the thing is, when he held that Bluetooth up to his ear, his ear, I knew some shit was about to pop off. He turned on the music. She was like, what is that? You want to hear some beach music? That ain't never no motherfucking beach music. I'd have never heard. You know how many people have talked about that clean patch of of, of no hair going down uh, to reeks fucking middle of his fucking just, just nothing right there nothing and you got the nerve to be a rapper or passionate about music he holds the bluetooth up to his ear he proceeds to rap along with the song and he says a brother wanna make you my round the way girl A brother want to make you my round the way girl. He then says, pack your bags, welcome to Virginia Beach in the song. Hey, and then he cuts off the song. Hazel ain't know what the fuck he was talking about. That's why Hazel ain't react. She was like, what the fuck, nigga? What? What? He then gets on his knees and proposes. She takes a good minute or two to say anything. He's like, I'm serious. She then says, yes. The producer asks her, does she like the song? She says, yes, I like the song. Did you? Hazel's a robot. I don't know if uh, I said this last time, but Hazel's a robot. I can say that. I can see it in your eyes, you Thursday. Okay. So Hazel did the old bait and switch. Said a random nigga from Japan wanted to marry her. And Tariq fell for it, and now she's going to America. You get a ticket, you get a ticket, you get a flag, you get a ticket. Everyone's getting a ticket, and Michael got his flag. Donald Trump, I'm on my way. Nigga, let him see, let him see your black ass. He's sending you right back to Nigeria. Pa visa, citizenship, and all. Fuck. Okay, um, that is the end of my review. The bullshit was too much for me to take. And the episode was three hours long. I looked at the episode and I said, oh no, big homie. I don't think I can do that. It is taking me two and a half days to watch this episode. And I watched the live part. And I was like, why in the hell did I watch that? Anyway, if you all like this review, please comment, subscribe, and share. Um, I think I had more to say, but I don't remember. My name is Brielle. I make beats. I sing songs. If you like what you see, come on along. Thanks.